Dr. D Flo. Hello, my name is Dr. D Flo, and I wanted to welcome you to my extensive addressable LED build guide. I've created this video to act as an introduction to LEDs and as a roadmap to the series. I will be showcasing two separate builds, an Arduino based build that can be up and running in two hours, and a more extensive build capable of running thousands of LEDs in real time off of your computer, but will require more time. In the basic build, you will learn how to solder, code in the Arduino IDE, use capacitors and resistors, and hopefully how to work with electrical components safely. In the extensive build, you will learn how to order custom PCBs, proper techniques for surface mount technology, code it in Python, and much more. To make sure everyone is on the same page, LED stands for light emitting diode. On an LED strip, each light source is typically made up of three diodes, red, green, and blue. In the digital world, red, green, and blue can be used to make any color in the rainbow. There are two types of LED strips, analog and digital. Analog LED strips are the most common and the whole strip functions as one unit or one LED. When bought online, these normally come with a little remote control allowing you to select one color at a time. Analog LEDs will have a 12 volt anode and three cathodes. Each cathode functions as either a red, blue, or green channel creating a completed circuit for the red, green, and blue diodes, allowing different amounts of current to flow through these channels will create any color in the rainbow. Digital or addressable LED strips will have drivers connected to the red, green, and blue diodes and will wait for a discrete, timing-specific signal. This signal tells the driver chip how much current each diode should draw. Digital LED strips will express the previous signal's color until they receive a new signal. These drivers, and consequently the diodes they drive, are addressable. Therefore, you can send a signal that tells the first LED to turn blue, the second LED to turn green, and the third LED to turn orange and so on. Your computer or Arduino only has to send the signal once and the colors will persist. There are only three inputs for an addressable LED, the anode, data, and the cathode. Digital or addressable LED strips present infinitely more color arrangements than analog strips. So how do we generate this data signal? As stated before, most addressable LEDs and the ones we will be using require timing specific protocols. Therefore, not all development boards are suitable, specifically the Raspberry Pi. Arduinos, on the other hand, work perfectly and are cheap. You can upload a light show to the Arduino and have it repeat in the background. However, controlling LEDs from your computer in real time through a USB connection to the Arduino is latency prone and not ideal. In this scenario, you would use a fade candy. A fade candy is an addressable LED driver that directly translates code from your computer to addressable LED data. However, the drawback of the fade candy is that it requires a program to be running on your computer at all times when using the LEDs. I started my addressable LED project with an Arduino, but I ended up using the fade candy because I wanted real-time control of my LEDs in order to do light beat matching, weather notifications, and in general have more flexibility. This is the first fork in the road for my build series. After this overview video, you can choose either the project with the Arduino or with the Fade Candy. In addition to data, addressable LEDs require power. The addressable LED strips that I will be using require five volts. LEDs are very sensitive to voltage. Too high will damage the LEDs and too low will result in distorted colors. This is because blue and green diodes require higher voltages than red. So as the voltage drops, the red diode will dominate the color. Even if you purchase a 5 volt power supply, the voltage can still drop because of resistance. If we think of electricity in a wire, like water in a pipe, then we can see that resistance is caused by pipe length and pipe diameter. Therefore, if your LEDs are far away from your power supply, or if you have many LED strips connected together, then you will most likely experience LED discoloration due to high resistance causing a voltage lower than 5 volts. This phenomena will also occur for the data, which can literally be a light show stopper. Furthermore, while LEDs are power efficient, each diode requires 20 milliamps at maximum brightness. An LED strip with 100 lights would need 
three diodes per light times 100 lights times 20 milliamps equals six amps. My room has 1,000 LEDs, which would mean I would need a 60 amp, five volt power supply. You would need a thick wire to safely carry that much current. Hardly practical. So as you can see, the project becomes complicated with more LEDs. The first solution to this problem is to simply use less LEDs. This is the route taken in the Arduino build. So what is the maximum recommended distance from the power supply to any LED? The distributor for the LEDs recommends one meter or less distance from any pixel to power connection. In practice, I found this distance to be a little lenient, but I have 35 meters of LEDs, which would mean that I would need a five volt and ground connection every meter, translating to 70 wires, a wire management nightmare. This does not take into consideration needing multiple power supplies evenly spaced out. All right, enough with the problems. It's time to get to the solution. I stumbled upon a design by a man named Dan Julio, who has invented an open source system for driving addressable LEDs at up to 100 feet away using a fade candy. I am going to refer to this system as the J design. So how does the J design accomplish this feat, which solves all of the aforementioned problems? Well, there are two components for this system, a controller board and a driver board. The controller board sits close to the computer and sends the LED data and power to the driver board, and the driver board is connected directly to the LEDs. The controller board sends 24 volts of power to the driver board, and the driver board steps its voltage down to 5 volts, sending the power at higher voltages and hence less current, because power is equal to current times voltage, we have less energy loss. Having a transformer on the driver board creates a perfect 5 volts, eliminating LED discoloration. The controller board also sends data to the driver board through differential signaling. Differential signaling takes the data signal and splits into two complementary signals. This means for the driver board to reconstruct the original data signal, it must find the difference between these complementary signals. Now why would we want to do this? Well, without the system, as the data is traversing across my room, noise is being introduced from the electromagnetic interference. When this data plus noise reaches the LEDs, it can manifest into unwanted colors and even flickering in the LEDs. As these complementary signals travel to the driver board, they too receive noise. The same noise because these signals are traveling very close to each other. When these complementary signals reach the driver board, the driver board finds the difference between them, effectively subtracting the noise, leaving a perfect original signal. Splitting one data line into two sounds like more wiring. However, the J design uses Cat5 Ethernet cables for data and power transmission, making wire management easy. However, there is a catch. Each driver board can only power 128 LEDs and each controller board can only send data and power to four driver boards. Consequently, I have eight driver boards and two controller boards for all of my LEDs. There are creative ways to hide these boards. I have 3D printed white cases for each board and they blend in quite well with my walls. There's a good chance you didn't even notice them in my introduction video. If you found yourself nodding your head during this explanation, I recommend checking out my series on how to build the J-Design and program the lights through Python. If I left you confused, or you want to quickly set up some adjustable LEDs, check out my Arduino build. Finally, while I did not talk about it in this video, I also have a series for building the Bluetooth black box for controlling not only my LEDs, but my computer as well. Visit my website or comment below if you have any questions. I will answer as quickly as possible. Thanks for watching.